the thing on in the message here. Hey, Chair Lindsay. Yeah. I just want to give you a heads up. Um, I originally was going to uh, have to cut out at noon. Um, I've extended that because obviously I know if we're under five votes, then we cannot pass anything. Um, so uh, as soon as our votes, our vote process is is over, um, I will move on to my appointment. I've kind of pushed back. So as soon as I heard Commissioner Burke um, have to leave and knowing the numbers, I don't want to put the whole meeting at jeopardy, FYI. Thank you. I appreciate that sincerely. Let's be efficient for everybody on this. It looks like uh, we need to do the lobbyist penalty correspondence and then just the stipulated final orders. And then I think you can be dismissed. Is that correct? Am I reading that correct? I think so. No, uh, Chair Lindsay, item number 27 requires a vote. OK, thank you. So we'll do items 11, 12, 13 through 18, and then 27. OK, that said, we'll go ahead with agenda item 11, please. Thank you, Chair Lindsay. Commissioners? Uh, the recommendation in your meeting books is to reduce the penalties for Dr. Daniels filing violations um, to $30. This represents a little over 20%, which is our standard for a second time violation. Thank you. Any comments? Seeing none, Vice Chair Fiscum, do you have a, a motion? Mr. Chair, I hereby move the commission support the staff recommendation for item number 11 on our March 22 public session agenda involving Dr. Nakia Daniels. Thank you. Any comments, commissioners? Seeing none, we'll call for the vote, please. Commissioner Thompson. Aye. Commissioner Fiscum. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Commissioner Newell. Aye. Commissioner Mason. Aye. Chair Lindsay. Aye. Motion passed six to zero. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Myers, uh, agenda item 12, is that you? Yes. Uh, Gary Cobb had for the third and fourth quarter of 2022, he had not filed his quarterly expenditure reports. Uh, he reached the maximum penalties on both quarters of $5,000 each. His explanation after he reached those, we undertook efforts to find him. Uh, he had not responded to any phone calls or emails. I eventually was able to locate him. He responded right away and submitted the explanation in your meeting books. Uh, the recommendation is a letter of education for the first violation and reducing the second violation to $500. Great, thank you. Commissioners, any comments? Seeing none, Vice Chair Fiscum. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, I hereby move the commission support the staff recommendation for item number 12 on our March 22 regular session agenda involving Mr. Gary Cobb. Thank you, seeing no comments, we'll go ahead and call for the vote, please. Commissioner Thompson. Aye. Commissioner Fiscum. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Commissioner Newell. Aye. Commissioner Mason. Aye. Chair Lindsay. Aye. Motion passed 6 0. OK, thank you. We're now on to agenda items 13 through 18. 13 through 15 is Investigator Walker. And it looks like uh, Mr. Manellis and Mr. Okoli and maybe even attorney Paternoster might be attending. Is that correct? Correct. The, and yes, we have Mark Manellis in the room. OK, and OK, and is there a. Uh, is I guess Micah Paulson is not attending. Is Dr. Smart Coley attending? They said they were, but they are not in the room as of now. OK, thank you. Uh, Mr. Manellis, am I saying that correctly? Uh, yes. 
all good. Got it right the first time. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, procedurally, what's going to happen here is Investigator Walker is going to give a report on the stipulated final order, and then we will uh, have a vote on that and we'll proceed that way. Go ahead, Investigator Walker. Thank you, Chair Lindsay and Commissioners. For the record, this is Monica Walker, Investigator for the Commission. Agenda items 13 through 15 in your meeting books are stipulated final orders for three City of King City Council members, Mark Manellis, Smart O'Coley, and Micah Paulson. The proposed stipulated final orders are for the most part the same. Therefore, with the Chair's permission, I will present all three cases together. Yes, please. Thank you. At its October 6, 2023 meeting, the Commission moved these matters to investigation to determine if the respondents had failed to disclose their conflicts of interest by participating in several discussions and a vote to adopt an ordinance for a city transportation system plan, herein called TSP. That could positively or negatively affect the property value of their respective residences. As you may recall, the council members convened three regular session meetings during May and June of 2023 to discuss recommendations made and to consider the adoption of the proposed TSP. Based on information obtained, the proposals listed within the TSP, such as the expansion of the city limits, improvements to the community, addition of bicycle and pedestrian paths, and the possibility of right-of-ways could have a financial impact on the property values of the mayor and the council members' properties. Thus, the mayor and councilors were faced with a potential conflict of interest when they discussed and voted on the matters relating to the TSP. From the information gathered, when the council met to discuss, consider, and vote on the adoption of the TSP, none of the respondents disclosed their potential conflict of interest. Because none of the council members made a public announcement of a conflict of interest prior to taking any action regarding to the adoption of the TSP, they were in violation of ORS 244-120, subsection 2. The respondents have agreed to these stipulated final orders in lieu of completing the investigation. The orders that are in your meeting books provides that the respondents will receive letters of education. We are recommending that the commission approve these stipulated final orders. Thank you, Investigator Walker. Um, Thank you. And we appreciate the respondents. I note that the respondents, I'm looking at the stipulated orders, they've already signed off on it in lieu of the investigation. And so with that said, we'll let's just proceed forward on on their stipulation and on the recommendation of staff and vice chair fiskin i'm happy to receive a motion are you there vice chair fiskin you might be muted pardon me uh, am i now muted and not muted now thank you for that i apologize again for my technology incapability mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, I hereby move that the commission approve the proposed stipulated final order before us as the final order in this matter and that the chairperson be authorized to sign it as such. On agenda item 13, correct, Mr. Manellis? Yes, uh, seeing no comments, we'll call for the vote, please. Commissioner Fisson. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Commissioner Newell. Aye. Commissioner Mason. Aye. Commissioner Thompson. Aye. Chair Lindsay. Aye. Motion passed 6 0. Thank you. Vice Chair Fiskum, agenda item 14, please. Mr. Chair, I hereby move the commission approves, approve the proposed stipulated final order involving Mr. Smart to Coley as the final order in this matter and that the chairperson be authorized to sign it as such. Thank you. We'll call for the vote, please. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Commissioner Newell. Aye. Commissioner Mason. Aye. Commissioner Thompson. Aye. Commissioner Fiscum. You broke up there? Okay, got an eye. I heard Fiscum say aye. Chair Lindsay. Aye. Motion passed 6 0. Thank you. Vice Chair Fiskum, agenda item four, uh, 15, please. 
Mr. Chair, I hear the commission approved order in matters involving Mr. Micah Paulson and that the proposed stipulated final order be the final order in this matter and that the chairperson be authorized to sign it as such. Thank you. Seeing no comments, we'll call for the vote, please. Molly. Commissioner Newell. Aye. Commissioner Mason. Aye. Commissioner Thompson. Aye. Commissioner Fiscum. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Chair Lindsay. Aye. Motion passed six to zero. Thank you, Mr. Manillas. Uh, the case has been uh, resolved on the stipulated final order, and you're welcome to stay if you'd like, but we're proceeding on to uh, the remaining agenda items. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, we're, we're now on to agenda <laughs> items 16, 17, 18. It looks like nobody is attending on those. Is, is, uh, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. All right, go ahead, Investigator Marietta. All right, thank you, Chair Lindsay. Commissioners, this is Investigator Hillary Marietta. Uh, agenda items 16 through 18 are stipulated final orders for Macy Clark, Mark Wing, and Deb Baker, um, Union County School District board members. Um, so on June 21st, 2023, uh, the board held an executive session under ORS 192.60 sub 2B to hear a complaint. Jay Blackburn brought against Superintendent Carter Wells. Um, under 2B uh, provides that a governing body may hold an executive session to consider the dismissal or disciplining of or to hear complaints or charges against a public officer, employee, staff member, individual agent who does not request an open hearing. Prior to the executive session on June 21st, the board did not satisfy the notice requirements and did not provide the appropriate written notice to Superintendent Carter Wells. And the recommendation in your books is to approve this for a letter of education. Thank you. Uh, that was for all 16 through 16, 17, 18, correct? Yes, correct. Okay, thank you. All right, Vice Chair Fiskman, agenda item 16, please. Mr. Chair, I hereby move that the commission approve the proposed stipulated final order for Macy Clark as the final order in this matter and that the chairperson be authorized to sign it as such. Thank you. Seeing no comments, we'll call for the vote, please. Commissioner Newell. Aye. Commissioner Mason. Aye. Commissioner Thompson. Aye. Commissioner Fiscum. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Chair Lindsay. Aye. Motion passed six to zero. Vice Chair Fiscum, agenda item 17. Mr. Chair, I hereby move that the commission approve the proposed stipulated final order for Mr. Mark Wing as the final order in this matter and that the chairperson be authorized to sign it as such. Thank you. Uh, we'll call for the vote, please. Commissioner Mason. Aye. Commissioner Thompson. Aye. Commissioner Fiscum. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Commissioner Newell. Aye. Chair Lindsay. Aye. Motion passed six to zero. And uh, items 18, Mr. Uh, Mr. Fiscum. Mr. Chair, I hereby move that the commission approve the proposed stipulated final order for Ms. Deb Baker as the final order in this matter and that the chairperson be authorized to sign it as such. Thank you and we'll call for the vote, please. Commissioner Thompson. Aye. Commissioner Fiscum. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Commissioner Newell. Aye. Commissioner Mason. Aye. Chair Lindsay. Aye. Motion passed six to zero. Okay, thank you. And we'll now jump to agenda item 27. Uh, Executive Director Myers, please. Yes. Um, thank you, Chair Lindsay, Commissioners. Uh, Susanna Nordoff, who is a city councilor for the city of North Bend, has applied for a legal expense trust fund. This is pursuant to the statutes in ORS 244.205 through 221. Uh, both she and her proposed trustee, John Briggs, are present, I believe. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So the process they must 
apply to the commission and the commission must approve. They must provide a copy of the proposed trust fund agreement, trust agreement and the affidavit of the public official and the trustee. Um, and in this case, what the statute provides is they may establish a legal expense trust fund if they incur or reasonably expect to incur legal expenses. And in her case, those proceeds may be used to defray legal expenses incurred in any civil, criminal, or legal proceeding or investigation that relates to or arises from the course or scope of their official duties. And subsection E is legal expenses must be incurred in connection with defending the public official in a proceeding or investigation brought or maintained by a public body. The application was submitted to us. It has been reviewed by our council as to sufficiency under those provisions. And therefore we are bringing it to the commission for approval of the legal expense trust fund, creation of the trust fund. Okay, so just to confirm my understanding, this is the first that I've experienced this, is that apparently Ms. Nordoff is expecting some legal expenses and she is a public official and she would like to create this fund in order to raise money to from whoever to assist with those expenses. And this is otherwise could be seen as an ethical violation. So this is kind of an approval by us to grant that, I guess, exception for lack of a better term. Is that is that a correct summary? Yes, obviously the, the legal expense trust fund, they can only use it for the purposes as authorized in the statute um, and can't use it for any personal expenses. If the criminal matter, if the legal matter or the investigation is resolved and there are funds remaining, they have to be sent back to the donors. So they in the agreements and the, the trust agreement and the affidavits, they are agreeing they will satisfy all of the requirements of these provisions. I see. And they have to make quarterly reports to us. Sure, I see. OK. Well, uh, and thank you, and I'm glad to hear that that's uh, been signed off by our council, et cetera. And uh, commissioners, any comments for Executive Director Myers? Seeing none, it uh, looks like we just need to make a motion to adopt that. And uh, Vice Chair Fiscum, do you Mr. have a motion? Mr. Chair, I, I do. I hereby move that the commission support the staff recommendation to establish a legal expense trust fund for Susanna Nordhoff. Thank you. Mr. Brady, is that uh, a sufficient motion? It is for my purposes. OK, great. <laughs> Any comments? Well done, Vice Chair Fiscum. Uh, seeing none, we'll call for a vote, please. Commissioner Thompson. Aye. Commissioner Fiscum. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Commissioner Newell. Aye. Commissioner Mason. Aye. Chair Lindsay. Aye. Motion passed six to zero. All right. Well, thank you very much. We're now done with the voting for this portion of the meeting. Uh, Commissioner Mason, you're welcome to to take off. Thank you, uh, Chair, and thank you, uh, Commissioners. OK, thank you. All right. We're now on to correspondence, received responses. We have no staff opinions. We just have some staff advice for agenda items 19. Can we hear all of those at the same time, 19 through 25, or are they one at a time? Um, yeah, or do we need to discuss it? Chair Lindsay, you don't need to discuss it. What I would like to make note of is all of the trainers, including all of our new trainers, and at least one of our new investigators, took a turn at writing this advice. So they're all represented in there. Excellent. And uh, Mr. And Chair, our, our normal process is not necessarily to hear these items one by one, unless someone wants to pull one out. I think we can make, 
I would encourage all of us, as I do, to read them because there's really, pursuant to our executive director's commentary, some very good information therein, not just as a training person for our training uh, uh, regime for our new staff, but information for us. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, next agenda item is uh, agenda item 28. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Charlie Esparza. I'm with the Oregon Government Ethics Commission. I'm one of the trainers. Um, let's see, just highlights. I'm not going to hold you all up too long. Uh, but Lex has given uh, the full two hour ORS 244, which green lighted her to now do trainings on her own. So big ups for her. Um, uh, Susan stole my thunder. I had notes in here for um, all the trainers having written, written advice. Uh, again, it's in the book and you'll probably have some in the next book as well. Uh, we did a training at Mount Hood Community College for their uh, manager training. They have reached out to us and said they'd like to have that same training for their faculty and staff. So that's anytime they ask for us to come back, that's a, that's a good thing. Uh, we have a new training room that's up and running. Uh, we have the sound barrier in there now, so you can't have to you don't have to deal with the echo that was in there before. And again, we're just continuing on with following up with all our questions that we get after our trainings, requests for trainings, and keeping up on our advice. Um, everyone here knows it is officially SEI season. So uh, that was uh, sent out in the February newsletter, um, the special edition SEI filer issue. It's not really special edition, but um, there's been a lot of new changes in uh, SEI filing this year. Um, you've had to update EFS to accommodate that as well as the uh, updated SCI filer guide. A lot of folks here have been involved in that. It was not an easy task, but we got it done. Uh, bulletins for all the new cha changes were sent out to all the JCs and SCI filers in the state of Oregon. And for as far as training goes, we have we have 21 uh, trainings that are scheduled during this SCI season. Five of them have already been done. Um, it's pretty much every day, uh, every business day from now till April 15th. Uh, and lastly, we do have an SEI filing video that's updated and has been posted to our website. And that's all I have. Thank you very much, Charlie. Appreciate it. All right, Executive Director Myers. Okay, so let's start with SEIs. Um, I checked during the meeting. We were, when I last checked, we have had 2,210 people complete their filings. We've, this has been one week, we have three weeks to go. Um, I noticed among the nine commissioners, six of you have already filed, one has already amended their filing, <laughs> one is still marked pending and two still need to file. We are happy to help you with any of those issues if you're having questions about it or you would like assistance. Um, trainer Chris is going to provide a brief training in our work session in a few seconds, uh, simply to help you if you have questions, but you may be receiving questions from members, you know, other filers, and we want you to have information on the recent changes. And then mainly I want to express my appreciation to all of our staff. Becky and Steph worked really hard with Tyler Tech at getting the system changed because of the law. Uh, David, Jessica, and Molly worked really hard to get all the JCs focused and to get the filers seated. Stephanie and Lex worked to get that SEI filer guide ready. All four of the trainers are doing trainings almost every day. And all of the investigators, trainers, and basically everyone here is answering questions and helping people file. Moving on, House Bill 4117, which is the bill that gives us authority to give advice on public meetings law, was signed by the governor yesterday. So we can now give advice. Um, the rulemaking, I am a little delayed, but I am aiming to get the proposed rules to Sean next week. And we are going to be issuing the invite to create the rule advisory committees and, and set those up meetings up. Hopefully at your main meeting, you will be able to at least review the proposed rules that are under consideration. Um, 
our LCs and POPs are due at the end of April. We have primarily six legislative concepts, concepts. They're all sort of technical fixes. Some we've introduced before, like removing the portion of the gift clause that is now has been ruled as unconstitutional. Um, correcting the timeline for a motion to expand the scope of an investigation because you guys don't meet every 30 days. Um, so I am in the process of finalizing those so that we can submit those LCs to uh, the governor's office and so forth. Finally, uh, recruitment. We are in the middle of recruiting for the compliance and uh, enforcement coordinator, my former position. We have second round interviews on April 3rd. Um, Hillary disappeared. Uh, the next. Mr. Fiscum has his hand. Oh, yes, Commissioner Fiscum. He's frozen again. Uh, he may have been asking about some of the other LCs. One of the ones he had proposed was potentially get, getting rid of preliminary review. While that can still be one of our LCs, when we floated that initial proposal to the governor's legal counsel and our liaison, it was not particularly well received. I mean, he didn't absolutely give it a thumbs down, but he didn't put it on his green light list. Yeah. So um, the the other LCs were things like cleaning up the honorarium statute, just the statute doesn't read very well. Um, so that's what they are. The last item, well, two last items. One, I need to let you all know, I am actually going on vacation or what they call a vacation at the end of April. I'm being forced to attend a wedding of a relative. <laughs> um, so I will be gone. There will be nothing, no PRs are due, but I will have Becky. Oh, okay, I will have Becky coordinate on anything that comes up. The last thing I wanted to bring to your attention, I was hoping Hillary would still be here, but uh, need to let you know, Hillary is leaving us. She has taken a position with the Oregon Medical Board, which will not require her to commute to Salem from Portland every day. And so uh, she has given her notice and will be departing in mid-April. So that, it's so that, unfortunate so for us, but lucky for her. Well, give her our best regards if we don't see her. Yeah. And for the record, when I asked about the Oregon Medical Board, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Oops. And that is it. We have scheduled a very brief work session to talk about just two things. Uh, Lex and Chris have slide presentations for that. So Lex, if you want to. Yeah, Chris is going to go first.